In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create some commonly used graphs um, in SPSS. So this um, data set has several variables. The first is just a participant number. The second is whether or not a participant identifies as being liberal or conservative. Uh, the next variable is the gender of the participant. And we have a variable that measures how strongly a given participant identifies with being either um, liberal or conservative. And we have a variable that rates, that indicates how um, rational they view the other side. So if they're liberal, how rational they view conservatives. And if they're conservatives, how rationally they view um, liberals as being. And then finally, we have a measure of their political attitude certainty, or how certain they are about their political attitudes. Let's go into Graph Chart Builder, and let's create um, some graphs. Uh, so let's start with a very simple bar graph where we can look at, let's say, uh, the frequencies. So we'll we'll double click on. Well, first we'll click on the the type of graph we want to create, and then we'll click on subtype. So double click on the subtype. So we'll start with a simple um, bar graph, and we'll just look at how many liberals and conservatives. So we'll have frequency or count on the y-axis. On the x-axis, we'll have uh, a nominal variable. We click OK, and it'll generate an output file. In that output file, we'll see, OK, there are a little under 60 conservatives and 70-something uh, uh, liberals um, in this data set. So that's a very simple frequency distribution uh, bar graph for a nominal binary variable variable with just two levels. Um, we can go to chart builder and perhaps instead of the count the frequency we wanted to look at if liberals and conservatives differ in terms of their identification strength. We could take ID strength and drag it to the y-axis and by default it will give you the mean for identification strength. So you can go ahead and look at the mean for that. We may also want to include uh, some error bars in that graph. So we'll leave the default and we'll display the 95% confidence intervals um, for um, each uh, for ID strength among liberals and conservatives. Uh, so I'll click on display error bars and 95% confidence interval will be the default. I'll click OK. I forgot to click apply. So we'll go back and do that again. And as for the error bars and 95% confidence interval, click apply so that the error bars actually show up. And then we see here that basically there's no difference between the um, strength of identification among liberals and conservatives in this sample and that our estimate based on the sample for where the population mean might be um, for each group largely overlaps. So it basically uh, straddles the, the, four, the, the a score of four on that scale. We'll go back to Chart Builder and we'll build a slightly more complicated bar graph called the Cluster Bar Graph. This will allow us to compare, um, to, um, to, we'll compare the mean level of, let's keep it at ID strength, between liberal and conservative, but also to break the results down by gender. So we'll move gender to the category axis there. We'll leave the error bars on there. So we'll click error bars and apply and then click OK. And now we can see um, the difference between males and females who are liberal in terms of their identification strength um, is a bit larger. Uh, in fact, the 95% confidence intervals seem not to overlap whereas the difference between um, males and females in terms of identification strength among conservatives is more or less a negligible difference. Uh, the 95% confidence intervals uh, largely overlap. So that's how you could create a clustered bar graph. Let's um, move on to create a histogram. So if we wanted to visualize um, a distribution, so we'll double click We'll click histogram, then double click on simple histogram. We could take a look at, let's look at a different variable, the political attitude certainty uh, variable. So we can see what that distribution looks like. It seems that um, there is, uh, there are a ton of, a lot of participants who are scoring um, around a little bit less than 
than six on that scale. There seem to be a few participants, at least one or, or about three potential outliers there who score between one and roughly three. But the bulk of the participants fall between uh, four and roughly seven on this scale with most around six. So we can get an idea of the distribution for this variable which appears to be a bit negatively skewed because of these uh, few outliers here. We'll go on now to create yet another type of graph. Is let's say if we wanted to compare, uh, we could click on a um, population pyramid and we could compare attitude certainty by another variable. So let's compare attitude certainty um, levels by liberal or conservative, by whether a person is liberal or conservative. And we can see the distribution there. There appear to be largely similar, although the distribution um, peaks for conservatives a bit higher than it appears to peak for, for liberals. So that population pyramid would allow you to compare basically two histograms. So another type of commonly used um, graph is a scatter plot. So a scatter plot will create a simple scatter plot. Um, to put, I'll click scatter dot and then double click on simple scatter plot, and we'll look at the relationship between identification strength and attitude certainty. So this will allow us to visualize the relationship between these two variables. It looks like there's a slight positive trend there, whereas identification strength increases, uh, political attitude certainty also seems to increase. If we double click on the output uh, file plot, we'll open the chart editor. We can actually ask it to add a regression line, and the regression line will be the uh, best fitting straight line uh, to summarize the data, and we see we have a very slight positive relationship um, between these uh, variables, uh, whereas identification strength increases, political attitude certainty also increases. If we wanted to break that down by subgroups, so let's say we wanted to look at wanted to look at look at it split up by liberals and conservatives, we could create a grouped scatter plot and move identification strength as the grouping variable, I mean, I'm rather liberal conservative as the grouping variable, click OK, and we can look at the relationship um, between ID strength and certainty um, broken down by liberal and conservative. So liberals here are represented by the blue circles, conservatives are represented by the green circles. Hard to discern any difference in the relationship there. We may also want to add a fit line to this, but we, we could instead add a fit line at the subgroups so we can see the, the difference in the relationship. So they're more or less have similar slopes, but it looks like the um, liberal group has a slightly stronger relationship between ID strength and certainty than the conservative group, although I would be, uh, I would doubt if that difference was, um, was uh, significant in any way. All right, so we've looked at uh, scatter plots, so we can move on to look at the last kind of plot, or one of the last kind of plots I want to look at is a box plot. So a, a one-dimensional box plot, or a 1D box plot, we'll just look at one variable, a box plot for one variable. So we'll, we can look at, let's look at certainty, political attitude certainty, and create a box plot for that. So here we have the box plot for political attitude certainty. Um, first off, the, the line in the middle here represents the median. So the median for that variable appears to be around 5.5. The top of the box represents the 75th percentile. 75th percentile for this data is around 6, and the bottom of the box represents the 25th percentile rank, which is around five, right? So we get an idea of the distribution in terms of the interquartile range between the 75th percentile and the 25th percentile. 
and we also get an idea of where the median is. Another useful thing about a box plot is it'll allow us to visualize if there are any potential outliers. So we see in SPSS case 108, case 87, and especially case 114, those seem to be uh, particularly low, at least relative to the um, to the rest of the distribution. So those are indicated as potential outliers. Now we could also create a box plot. Uh, it's called a simple box plot, so I'll double click on that. We'll look at certainty, but we can break it down um, by, let's say, whether or not a person is liberal or conservative by putting that on the x-axis there. We click OK, and we see now we have box plots for each group. So we see the mean for certainty among liberals is um, a little more than five, and it's ever so slightly higher among conservatives. And we can see among conservatives there seems to be one outlier in the negative direction, and among liberals there's uh, one potential outlier here, and then one extremely low score um, for case 114, right? So, and then we can also get an idea of the 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 um, variability in terms of the interquartile range. So it seems that conservatives have a slightly have slightly more variability in their interquartile range than do liberals. All right, finally, the last kind of plot I want to demonstrate uh, typically requires or is conducted on data that are in a time series or collected over time. So here let's pretend that these variables represent um, uh, the first variable will be a week. So this is data collected over 12 weeks. And let's say this is the amount of time spent studying uh, for your statistics exam. So we'll create a time series graph. We're going to go into Chart Builder and then ask for a um, line graph. And then we can put, put in week on the x-axis and duration on the y-axis. Click OK. And we get our output file, which will allow us to visualize the changes in the amount of time spent studying over time. So that would be a line graph. Line graphs are primarily used for data that are collected um, over time. So that's been a, a brief overview of how to generate um, several commonly used uh, graphs in SPSS. Of course, there are many more options in, in terms of uh, editing and formatting the graphs, but uh, that'll that'll do for a, a very brief overview of how to create some of those graphs.